Again, this is 3.3 uh, Mixtures of Matter Part 2. Uh, so this is picking up where we left off in uh, Part 1. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the last key question, which is what are the several techniques used to separate mixtures? So just to kind of go back on what we talked about uh, in the last video, the heterogeneous and the homogeneous mixtures, uh, the last five key words, vocabulary words you see highlighted are techniques that are used in separating uh, these mixtures, the components of these mixtures. Uh, which one of these techniques you use depends. Um, the chemical properties of the substances in the mixture will determine which, which um, separation technique you're going to use. So the first one's filtration, distillation, crystallization, sublimation, and then lastly chromatography. So let's first go ahead and talk about filtration. So filtration is probably one of the more simpler ones, and it's it's an idea and a term that you've heard before, and it's it's exactly what you're thinking right now. It's it's filtering, um, it's filtering the the components of a mixture uh, based off of uh, based off of the chemical properties. Now you can use filters. Uh, you can use a variety of filters to separate uh, different. Um, components, different substances in a liquid. What you see here is a, um, a filter that is uh, obviously filtering out a number of, of different component substances. Um, you have varying bacteria, zooplankton, algae, different solids, um, and suspended uh, particles, viruses, colloids. So this is a very important water filter. Uh, so you see that first arrow, that's the first that's the first container that contains the water that is not purified. So this could be a, a solution gathered from a lake, a river, or any any body of water that uh, you can imagine. So you run the water through the first microfiltration, and that one will will filter the large the largest particles, uh, the largest organisms uh, in in that mixture. So using just one filter won't filter every single thing so you have another one ultra filtration where you can filter out uh, things that are much smaller anywhere from one micrometer to a 10 nanometer uh, molecule so these are macromolecules can be any kind of protein or uh, virus colloids and then once you get past that you have now nano filtration okay so you're getting into even smaller uh, particles uh, dissolved organics, uh, ions like salts, um, and then whatever ions aren't filtered through that, you can do the reverse osmosis, um, any positive or negative ions to eventually uh, get a very pure water or a pure solution. Or, I'm sorry, uh, this would not be a solution because there aren't any um, solvents inside. So this would be actually pure water, pure liquid. Okay, so the next uh, separation technique is distillation. Okay, so distillation is a separation technique for homogeneous mixtures uh, that is based on the differences in boiling points of these substances. Okay, so go back and think back to what a homogeneous mixture was, which was a uh, an example of one would be a, a, a solution that is in a single phase. You cannot distinguish the varying substances, the, the constituent substances even under a microscope so uh, this is what you see here is a distillation apparatus where um, that is used to separate a liquid from its its sol its dissolved solid in that liquid okay uh, so for our example here we're going to use we're going to go back to an, to a solution that we've talked about before which is copper sulfate again this is a homogeneous mixture that homogeneous mixture would be poured into this distillation flask. Okay, you would add heat. Now, some things to consider. Again, distillation is a separation technique that is used uh, based off of the boiling points of the two substances. So if you remember, we have two substances in this homogeneous mixture, which is copper sulfate and your basically your water. The boiling point of water is 100, uh, 100 Celsius compared to the boiling point of copper sulfate is 650 Celsius. So incredibly uh, a large difference in the boiling points for these two substances, which would co will come in handy for this particular technique. Okay, 
So taking a closer look at what actually happened. So this copper sulfate inside, now I know it says salt water on this diagram, but let's go ahead and just imagine that we actually put copper sulfate in there. We add heat. Now we want to separate these two components, the copper and the water. So you know, rather than trying to achieve 650 Celsius, let's just go ahead and achieve one that's a lot easier, which is 100 Celsius. You know, let's say we, we uh, heat it up to 150 Celsius. That's still nowhere near the boiling point for copper sulfate. So what will happen is, is as that water heats up, it's going to evaporate. Okay, and the thermometer up there will be able to tell us the, oops, excuse me, the temperature of that water. So as the water evaporates, it's going to it's going to just make its way up, okay? It's going to make its way up through the tubes into the condenser. Now, in this condenser, uh, you have that you have the tube that is running all the way down, all the way down into our uh, into our flask. But at this point right here, you're going to notice that there's a condenser there. Uh, you have water, cool water now. Now this could be faucet water. You know, faucet water you know will run anywhere from 60 to 70 degrees which is 30 degrees, you know, 30 to 40 degrees different from the water that is boiled uh, and is now a gas. So as the cool water runs through the condenser, it actually cools, it cools our steam, okay, our evaporated water, and it cools it back down into a liquid. And as it cools down, it kind of drips and it runs back down into our flask. Okay, so again, to revisit this idea, you have water and copper sulfate. When you mix them together, you end up with a homogeneous solution. Now the distillation technique is actually doing the reverse. It is separating the two constituent substances back into their copper sulfate and into their water using the boiling point, the different boiling points of each substance. Okay, So in our distillation flask, what's left over is the copper sulfate solid. And then in our uh, in our other flask, Erlenmeyer flask, we are left over with pure water, completely separate from our copper sulfate. So again, this technique is used uh, with chem with two substances that you know the boiling points of, and you can take advantage of them and use them to separate uh, separate the two. Uh, thirdly, we have crystallization and sublimation. We're going to talk about these two uh, at the same time. Um, so with crystallization, this is a separation technique for, hom again, homogeneous mixtures. If you look at the beaker on the left, you cannot tell that there's anything else inside of there. It just looks like water. Uh, another reason why you should never drink anything in the lab because uh, it might look harmless, but you know, there's other solutes in there that could, be, um, that could be dangerous. So separation technique for homogeneous mixtures that results in the formation of a pure solid particle from a solution containing dissolved substances. And in this case, crystallization, you end up with something that resembles crystals. Actually, technically they are crystals, uh, but nothing that you can take to a pawn shop and sell. So with these crystals, uh, which the, solute, the solute that's dissolved in there, you can either increase the temperature or lower the temperature and whatever is inside of there, whatever is dissolved in there, with the change in temperature, you'll end up with what's on the right with, with the crystal, okay, a solid crystal. Uh, another way to, to make the dissolved uh, particles inside of that solution separate is to dissolve another substance that will chemically react to it and create crystals. Okay? And then at that point, you can either use the distillation uh, technique that we talked about earlier, where you can heat it up, Okay, you can heat it up and have the water evaporate and cool off and go into a different container, leaving your solid crystals. Or you could actually filter it. Okay, you can take your you can take your solution that has the formed crystals, uh, take a flask and put a uh, a filter paper. Uh, even simple uh, coffee can filter paper will work. You pour your solution inside of there, and then you end up with separate crystals. Uh, as a result, and then in the flask, you'll end up with your uh, your pure water. Okay, so with sublimation, uh, sublimation is one that's not somewhat not very commonly used. Um, this is a process of uh, solid changing directly into gas. Okay, so this technique 
can take advantage of the chemical property of a particular substance that's mixed in with something and you can cause that substance to uh, to directly change into a gas uh, now the the picture at the bottom there with the mountain uh, you're actually it looks like the mountain is smoking uh, but what in fact is happening is sublimation you have solid ice that is that is uh, going directly uh, it's having a phase change directly from a solid to a gas. Normally, ice will go from a solid, liquid, and then gas, but um, with these particular substances, they will go directly into a gas. And then you can use that to separate uh, something that will sublimate. Um, you can either change the temperature on it, you can change the pressure, and, and then that will expose that particular... Uh, it will expose that particular substances um, chemical property to to separate from another so lastly uh, chromatography this is one that we'll explore in greater detail uh, later on in the year uh, actually in a, just a, about a month or so really uh, chromatography is a technique that separates the components of a mixture on the basis of tendency of each to travel across a surface of another what exactly does that mean? Well, you've probably actually I've already seen this. Uh, you just don't realize it. Um, but what you see here uh, is an example of chromatography uh, with a spinach leaf. Okay, so uh, you can use a, use a either use a spinach leaf or something as simple as a sharpie ink blot. Okay, so you have your ink blot or your spinach, your sample spinach. And your solution that's at the bottom, in this case, uh, for the simple chromatography, you have water. Uh, and for, for the spinach, you could have anything from you know, any kind of oils or alcohols that will run up that paper. And as the alcohols or the water run up, you can see, you can tell that there's a separation in colors. So if you look at the spinach one, you have a yellow, a greenish, orange, and then a reddish color. Now... In fact, spinach, spinach has all of these particular uh, molecules inside of it, but the most abundant one is obviously the, the green. But the red, the yellow, and orange do exist in there. Um, uh, you see this, this phenomenon uh, express itself at this time of year uh, in Washington where uh, as the temperatures drop, you have the molecules the chlorophyll molecules in leaves, uh, they, they degenerate and they expose the underlying colors of leaves uh, and then you end up having trees that are reddish, yellow, uh, orange, uh, the fall colors that we've all come to enjoy. Now for the one on the left, the ink blot, uh, you'll notice there that as the, as the water runs up that filter paper, it actually separates the different colors uh, that it separates the different colors that are actually uh, blended into one in that black ink blot. Okay, so if you want to find out what the different components are, for in this case, either an ink blot or a spinach leaf, uh, you can run chromatography uh, to expose the underlying um, molecules or chemicals that that make up a single a single color for uh, any particular substance. Okay, so just a review, these are the five separation techniques, your filtration, distillation, crystallization, sublimation, and chromatography. Uh, and this was 3.3 uh, mixtures of matter part two, in which we discuss the last key question of this section, which was what are several techniques used to separate mixtures?